the RTX 4060 Ti has been attacked and downplayed, shamed and insulted since its release earlier this year. Thanks to Brian over at BPS Customs, I was able to get my hands on my very own 4060 Ti to see for myself if it really is as bad as everyone says. I think you might want to sit down for this one. You would think the RTX 4060 Ti was the next evolution of GPU from NVIDIA after the incredibly underrated 3060 Ti released back in 2020. However, this is not the case because NVIDIA has actually taken a step back with the 4060 Ti. Let me explain. The 3060 Ti was essentially a cut down version of the RTX 3070. In fact, it was built on the same GA104 die. This gave it incredible performance versus something like an RTX 3060. But due to its 8GB VRAM buffer and higher price, the RTX 3060 is a much more popular card. Fortunately, I'm lucky enough to have an RTX 3060 Ti here in the studio to put up against my newly acquired 4060 Ti. Let me show you a quick look at the specs differences between the 30 and 40 series cards, and then you'll understand why I said they've taken a step back. The first card is the Gigabyte Aorus Master RTX 3060 Ti. It achieves a max boost speed of 1,980 megahertz. It has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. However, some models come with GDDR6X and it runs on a whopping 256 bit memory bus. A 650 watt power supply is recommended. And the current cheapest price option is the ASUS Dual OC in white coming in at $339 US. The RTX 4060 Ti that I'm testing with is Nvidia's very own Founders Edition. This boost to 2,540 megahertz has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a much slower 128-bit bus. Quite the downgrade from last gen, if you ask me. This does result in significantly lower power consumption. Therefore, Nvidia recommends a 550 watt power supply as a result. Now the cheapest option for the 4060 Ti is the MSI Ventus three times priced at $389. The 4060 Ti is available in both 8 gig and 16 gig flavors. However, the Founders Edition only comes in the 8 gig model. Plus, the 16 gigabyte versions come in at $100 more than the 8 gig versions. Crazy, right? If you've gotten any value from this video so far, don't forget to give us a like down below and subscribe for more PC related content. I bet you're thinking, am I only going to compare the 4060 Ti to the 3060 Ti? Nope. I threw in the RTX 3060 and AMD's RX 6700 XT as well. The first card is the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3060. I like to put the 3060 into my benchmark numbers as much as possible, because it's kind of my control test. This card is very popular and I just had to have it. The 3060 comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Well, there is an eight gig model, but don't bother with that. Trust me. It runs a max boost speed of 1,882 megahertz on a 192 bit memory bus. It also requires a 650 watt power supply. The cheapest model I found currently is the MSI Ventus two times for $280 US. The last card in my testing is the PowerColor Fighter RX 6700 XT. Of course I had to include at least one AMD GPU. The 6700 XT comes with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running on a 192 bit memory bus. It achieves a max boost clock of 2,581 megahertz and PowerColor recommends a 650 watt power supply. For this GPU, the cheapest option was the Sapphire Pulse at 319 after a $10 off promo code applied at checkout. All these GPUs will be linked down below as always. If you decide to pick one up, I'd appreciate it if you used them. There are affiliate links and they help out the channel at no extra cost to you. Enough build up, let's get into these benchmarks. I ran a total of five games at two different resolutions and I do three runs per test and I take the average of those. All games are ran on the high presets, but I'll leave a more in-depth look at the settings that I used next to each benchmark chart. Fortnite is the first game up. It was run on the high preset using DirectX 12, 100% render scale, and Nanite and Lumen was disabled. At 1440p, the 4060 Ti came out on top with 131.4 FPS average. The 3060 Ti wasn't too far behind at 120. 1080p was a similar situation. The 4060 Ti once again came out on top, but not by much. This is why most reviewers aren't happy with the 4060 Ti, because its performance 
isn't much greater than the card it's meant to replace. I do want to note one thing for Fortnite. The RTX 3060 was the most unplayable experience. Even though it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is the same as the 6700 XT, it was actually really disappointing. I had a lot of stuttering and frame drops, which you can see in the 1% lows. I don't know if it's a problem with the card or what the issue is, but the 4060 Ti, the 6700 XT, and the 3060 Ti ran much smoother in this game under both resolutions. I recently added Boulder's Gate 3 to the lineup since it's a newer title. At 1440p, the 4060 Ti was beaten by the RX 6700 XT. And of course, naturally, it had much better 1% lows. The 4060 Ti was able to achieve 87.5 FPS average with 61 for the 1% low. At 1080p, the 6700 XT won again and was joined by the RTX 3060 Ti in beating the 40 series card. Overall, all the cards tested gave a very smooth experience with this newly released title. Forza Horizon 5 was the next game tested. The 1440p results are more of the same situation. We have the 6700 XT beating the 4060 Ti again at 177.4 to the 4060 Ti's 172.9. Yes, a difference of 4 FPS is small, but a win is a win. At 1080p, the gap widened with the 6700 XT seeing 217.1 FPS average with the 4060 Ti at 200. The 3060 and 3060 Ti were a decent amount behind. Hogwarts Legacy is a game I like to keep in the testing even though it's tough running consistent benchmarks. At 1440p, the 4060 Ti manages a small win at 86.4 FPS average to the 3060 Ti and 6700 XT's 84.9. However, the 1% lows were worse on the 4060 Ti than the other two cards. 1080p was similar as all three cards hit just over 100 FPS average. The 6700 XT's 1% low was able to hit 63.6 to the 56.8 and 54.2 on the 4060 Ti and 3060 Ti. I wanted to note only 6.9 gigabytes of VRAM was used at 1080p by the RTX 3060. VRAM limitation has been an issue in Hogwarts Legacy since its release for 8 gig GPUs. This is a huge topic of discussion right now in the gaming space, though most games still don't require more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. Overwatch 2 is an example of this. 1440p runs very well on every card. The 4060 Ti and 3060 Ti both hit over 200 FPS, with the 6700 XT trailing behind at 179.4. Stepping down to 1080p, all GPUs performed excellent, and even the 3060 was able to achieve over 200 FPS. I probably could have run this game at max settings and still gotten competitive frame rates. So what's my overall impression of the RTX 4060 Ti? Now I do want to give a little disclaimer real quick. This card wasn't given to me, I paid for it. So my thoughts and impressions are really one of the best ways to look at this from a consumer standpoint. The 4060 Ti looks great and I'm overall happy with the performance. If the RTX 3060 Ti wasn't still readily available new for about $50 less. Looking at the gaming performance between these two cards made me realize why everyone is so upset with the 4060 Ti. So all this testing has shown me is that the 3060 Ti is still a good recommendation in 2023, at least when compared to the 4060 Ti based on price and the 4060. That one's even worse value. If you're wanting a current 40 series GPU and you're shopping in the $400 to $600 price range, do yourself a favor, save up a little bit more money and go with the RTX 4070. You won't regret it, trust me. Now, if you're shopping under $400, it looks like the RX 6700 XT is still your best option when it comes to raw gaming performance. It trades blows with the RTX 4060 Ti and comes with four more gigabytes of VRAM, which is always a plus. Also, the smoothest gameplay I experienced was using the RX 6700 XT. I don't know what it is, if Nvidia's drivers have gone downhill or AMD has just improved there so much, but the experience was great on the AMD card. Now, this doesn't mean I'm about to throw away the RTX 4060 Ti onto the shelf and just forget that it exists. I actually wanna do a build with it and see how it performs outside of the test bench setting versus other cards in its price range. I'm just curious to see how it will perform with a build and once prices come down, is it a viable option in the future? Now, if you're interested in seeing this, I'll leave a video right over here, as soon as I make it, of course. 
And while you're there, check out some of our other videos too. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay.